everyone. Hey, Cherry. I uh, thought today we would do a little watercolor fish. So I've pre-drawn a fish with a uh, pencil, a light drawing. And I'm going to come in with a micron pen, a zero one. Uh, they start at zero zero five, which is very fine tip. And this is the one up at a zero one. And going to draw my fish. Now, if drawing isn't your thing, I wouldn't worry too much. If you're more into the painting aspect, then you will get, use this as an exercise in painting and not worry too much about the drawing part. And of course, you can always trace with tracing paper images of fish, you know, from uh, from sites that allow you to do that. I don't worry too much about perfection, which allows me to uh, draw my own fish. <laughs> Uh, now I'm taped down here, but I'm going to turn this simply because I can't work at an angle like that. So, for this section. And for the rest of the video, I think I'll speed this up. Because it's not about drawing, it's about painting. So I'll come in and speed this up a little bit and then we'll come back in when it's ready to paint. Okay, I think we're ready to start painting. Now I've taped it down because if I don't, it'll curl up. Um, I'm using Arches 100% cotton paper. I'm going to use a size five brush to start. I'll probably end up using this brush all the way through. And, oh, let's see, let's start. Let's start with this flower image here. I'm going to start with a, um, this is Turquoise by Windsor & Newton. And let's start with that. Nice, deep, rich color. My brush is damp, not too dark. I was sorry, not too wet. Such a pretty color. So I did want to talk to t today to you just how YouTube works. Now some of you may know everything I'm going to say. Some may know some of what I'm going to say. And some of you will have no idea how YouTube works. Um, you just come in to enjoy the uh, tutorials and to learn things. So, for a YouTube creator, I'm going to talk to you about how it works. Now, when you start a channel, you have to go through Google and make an account. 
and uh, I'm going to do yellow on this part of the fish, I think. Um, using Daniel Smith yellow. So you create an account. Usually you start off with a few friends and family that will uh, subscribe. Even if they don't come in on a regular basis or never come in again. It's, I mean, it helps a little bit for your numbers, for subscribers. Doesn't help at all for your analytics for the data that's important to YouTube. They, the number of subscribers is only a very small portion of what YouTube does to uh, either move your channel forward or recognize your channel. Um, yeah, so you start out with however many you start out with. I think I started out with something like Oh, I don't know, 14 friends and family. Um, let me see. I want those lips to be red, but I think I'll come back there later after this is dried a bit. I'm going to come down by the tail, maybe. And Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do the larger areas first, and then I can do details with the light, the smaller areas. Decide what colors I want to use. So best to decide which prominent colors the biggest areas are going to be, and then go from there. So I think I'll come down here uh, and do that fin. I guess that's a fin. I'm not the big... I don't know a lot about fish. So let's do something that is uh, not too bright. This is M. Graham paint. That's pretty bright. <laughs> I don't think that's what I'm looking for. Okay. I could use that as an accent color. I want something a little softer. And let's use... Now, we're going to ha put some blue in the background, so I don't want to have too much blue here. Let's go with the green. Let's go with sap green. Nice, safe color to go with. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and oftentimes, I... Uh, try to promote my videos by uh, uploading the link to some of the Facebook pages, groups that I belong to. Since I do watercolors and mixed media, collages, alcohol ink, uh, and a limited amount of journaling, I've been doing less and less of that. I just... There's so many women out there doing beautiful journal work that I've sort of pulled away a little bit in that area. The response I'm getting, the strongest response I'm getting is with the watercolors and then next with the alcohol ink. So, yeah, so um, we could bring that green up here too. And or here. Let's bring it in, bring it here. Yeah, so I try to get, you know, get people motivated and um, have people come in to my channel who are interested in learning, mostly beginner tutorials, learning a bit about watercolor or Alcohol ink, whatever the case may be. Okay, we will be using some. We could bring yellow back down here too. Yeah, let's go with the yellow. That would be nice. Complement that green. I'm going with Daniel Smith yellow again. So the 
the problem with the way I've set up my channel is I don't have a dedicated group of people that have subscribed. I mean, I have some dedicated people who have subscribed, don't get me wrong. But I'm not just a watercolor channel. I'm not just an alcoholic channel. I don't just do collages, etc. Um, so since I mix it up a bit like that, YouTube's not sure where to categorize me. And therefore, they don't know quite how to suggest videos to viewers from me. So that I only learned in the last, I've been at this well over a year, and I've only learned in the last few months that that's probably, probably, sorry, affecting me. Um, I'm going with the uh, M. Graham orange here. So yeah, um, and how they work it. For those that are doing their channels now i do this as a hobby i love to do it i love to share the little bit i know um i like to encourage beginners in the odd time i do something that might be considered an intermediate piece a little further ahead than beginner but it's my beginners that i'm mostly um catering to I uh, where am I going to go with this now? I think I'll do various shades of the green here. So I'm going to use my sap green, and I'm going to bring in a bit of uh, paint spray to give me more of an olive green. So yeah, you can get. Your videos can be promoted either through um, external factors like coming in from Facebook groups, people coming in from Facebook, or suggested. Let's do every second one. Or browsing, people just, uh, you know, looking around YouTube and come across your channel. And, or search. You could search watercolors or, you know, a more defined search would be something like watercolor flowers or fish, whatever the case may be. So I'm curious if you let me know how you ended up finding this video. Did you come in through a Facebook group, which my guess is probably a good, probably 50% of people came in that way. Um, or did you do a search? Or were you browsing? So back into my sap green. So yeah, those are generally the way people come across videos. Now what YouTube does is as a YouTube creator, I have to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Now, if let's say a hundred people watch this video and they each watch it for, let's say six minutes. Often people don't watch the entire video. Let's say they each watch it for six minutes. That would give me um, 600 watched minutes. So that would give me 10 hours, watch hours. And that would go toward my 4,000 that I need. Um, I think I'm going to shade a bit here with some of the dark green too. So, but what happens is they determine these factors through analytics, which is computer generated, and it's 
out of the last 365 days. So, for example, I have two videos 10 months ago that uh, got quite a few v views and lots of watch hours. Um, one was an alcohol link video and one was um, a watercolor video. And one got, is, and they're both still growing. People are still watching them. So at this point, they're like, you know, I got... something like 3,500 views on one and pushing 5,000 views on the other. So that, between the two of them, let's see where we're going. Let's do the lips now. Between, I'm doing Alyssa and Crimson. And I think I'll use Alyssa and Crimson by Daniel Smith because it's just that much darker. So between the two of them, it was like 700 watch hours now my total watch hours at this point is only around 1500 and 700 of those are from those videos that I did 10 months ago now what's going to happen is they only take into consideration your details over the last 365 days now those two videos are 10 months old which means that in two months' time, I lose those um, watch hours. It's going to start from uh, 365, in two months' time, so sometime in February, um, late February. My watch time is going to start from 365 days back to the, you know, that date in February. So I will lose... Um, I'm going to make the eye blue. I will lose those watch hours. So my point being that it is difficult to get to a point of being monetized. Now, some people have moved much faster than I have. And as I said, um, you know, it could be the quality of my videos could be it could be because well another thing which is you know rather upsetting <laughs> for me as a senior is I'm not a young person you know I'm not a, a 28 or a 32 year old you know pretty girl so that you know that attracts more viewers now not always of course some people are you know not necessarily attracted to videos based on that but it, it you know it's human nature and it does seem to be the way of things so um a lot of my audience a lot of my subscribers are 55 plus which is great for me i love it but it it uh it's, it's a little more limited so what color shall we go with now uh something now this is going to be black and white because i've made it like a checkerboard so what do we want to do here we could do oh, red always looks nice yeah let's do red red stands out nicely against black and white so let's do our edges here in red yeah so other considerations for youtube is the views, the watch hours, the um, comments, and the likes. So those videos that are getting more comments and more likes are uh, going to stand out more for YouTube and will be suggested and promoted more than than others that aren't getting I I'm, I struggle getting comments and I, I'm thinking um, because I've said how many hundreds of times I would love to hear from people I'm thinking people are a little shy and that's possibly because of my age group my sub you know average age group I, I, I'm only guessing here I really don't know but this is my guess um, people are a little 
a little bit shy. They're not necessarily looking for a community to, to belong to. Uh, they just want to learn a few new te techniques, some ideas, things like that. So it disappoints me not to hear from people. I have a couple of people and actually mostly you, other YouTube creators who are faithful, who have been wonderful. And for them, I am thankful. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear more from people. As I said, YouTube uh, will promote, promote and bring forth your video based on things like comments and likes, view hours, comments and likes. So it does make a difference. Let's come in with the orange again, bring it up into this area. Oh, I think I'll wait and let that dry a bit. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around again. Make sure I'm okay in the camera. So those are some factors that affect, <clears throat> excuse me, affect uh, YouTube creators and their channels. We could do our flower here. Let's pick out a different color. Let's go with, uh, let me see. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to leave that. I'm going to decide this larger area up here. And I may go with a, let's get ground that a little bit and come in with some, uh, some brown, light red brown, maybe, sort of a brick color. Let's try that. So. I hope that gives you a bit of an idea of how, how YouTube works. Um, I am so far away from being where I need to be to be monetized. Like I said, it's a thousand subscribers and uh, 4,000 viewing hours. And you get those mostly from being promoted. And you know, more people come in, more viewing hours you'll get, things like that, more subscribers. Uh, but it's, like I said, depending on things like comments and likes and blah, blah, blah. So it's a good thing I'm not here for the money because I don't think I'll ever reach it. I mean, they say... YouTubers that have been on for a long time say that, yes, you will get there, but gee, that's a, it can be pretty discouraging at times, I'll tell you. You know, when you put a video out and you think, oh, th this one's, you know, I really like this one. I hope this one does well, and it doesn't do well. You know, you can't tell. My taste is not the same as, you know, everybody has different tastes so I can't really determine which is going to do well and which isn't so I just cross my fingers and hope for the best and hope I'm you know helping people along that's the point that's why I'm here to share you know the little bit of knowledge that I know so Okay, let's come down to the tail for a bit. And I think I will. Hmm. Let me see. I'm thinking about this area here. We could bring some, let's bring some red back down that way. I don't want to have four million different colors here. I don't know what kind of fish this is supposed to be. I don't know. A clownfish, maybe? I don't know. I love watching documentaries, programs on 
marine life and I love them but it doesn't seem to stick in my mind when they uh, name things. I could watch a whole video several times and only pick up a certain amount of uh, knowledge from it, but still enjoy it, like thoroughly enjoy watching it. So that's the point for me. I'm going to come in with a little bit of darker to sort of outline this. A little less water. There we go. Okay. Ooh, I don't know what color we should do that. Uh, I think a yellow would be, give us sort of a triangle. We can bring some yellow into the tail too. But yeah, a yellow would work. Um, yeah, let's do yellow. I'm, hope, I'm hoping that you can uh, detect my thought process here. I uh, think I'm fairly good at composition, you know, um, balance, things like that. So, what else? I wonder if I shouldn't put yellow here too. I think I will. And then limit a little tiny bit of yellow there and then that will be it for yellow. So I'd love to know from people, if you're here because watercolor's your thing, is it uh, ink and wash? pen and wash, line and wash, um, that you prefer? Is it all kinds of watercolors? Is it painting loosely? You know, um, people are, have different things that they uh, prefer about uh, their work. Or are you here just to learn for the first time about watercolor? Just trying to pick out some more color here wonder if I should do, uh, maybe do that center in the turquoise, that pretty turquoise. It's such a fresh, beautiful color, isn't it? I really like the color. I also like grays. Gray seems to be one of my favorite colors. Gray, green, this turquoise, I think is beautiful. Um, cerulean blue to me is beautiful. So, yeah, we could do yellow again here. Makes for a nice bright painting. Sort of a reverse of this. Well, let's do that. What the heck, eh? And again, my brush is damp, not too wet. So yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Um, the type of painting you like doing, whether it's specifically watercolor, and if it is, is it ink and wash that you're most interested in? such as what we're doing today? Is it uh, florals? Is it marine life? Like what brought you into this video today? What made you decide to click on this video? Is it because I mentioned it's a beginner video? I'm just curious. Okay, we can do our reeds here. Let's do our reeds. I'm using sap green again. This is uh, Windsor & Newton. I do love green. Now let's do the next one a shade darker, just for a little contrast. So I'm going to add a bit of Payne's Gray. I 
and I'll accent this one a little bit, sort of outline it with the uh, olive green. Okay, and we'll go to the other side and do the same idea. So, yeah, uh, curious too, if, are you uh, one of my older subscribers? Are you a younger subscriber? Like I said, I don't know what the number is, but I do have my subscribers are predominantly 55 plus and quite a few that are over 65, which is kind of cool since I'm. 68 how old am i 68 <laughs> after a certain number you start forgetting I, yeah i'm 68 born in 53 68 yeah i think so <laughs> so but how would people know that i mean i suppose they could tell a bit from my picture but most of my videos, you don't see my picture, so I'm not sure people, just a coincidence, maybe. Let's uh, accent of this one with a little bit of, uh, of the olive, olive green again. Okay. Now I'm going to start filling in my checkerboard here because this will give me an idea of what colors what you know do I want to change up my colors am I good with what I'm doing now in that color scheme or um, do I add colors So I'm going to, as you can see, you do, I'm sort of all over the place with this one. One square black, then a white, then black, which is your checkerboard effect. And then down your next line, that's black, so this one's white, that's white, so this one's black. And I've drawn this on at an angle so that I don't get straight up and down checkers. I get, well, angled checkers. Obviously, I have flair for the obvious. Okay, and we're, so we're doing every second one will be filled in. I'm just using a Sharpie. This is a little bit, the tip of this is a little bit thicker than my zero one, so it fills in a little faster. Okay, I'm going to fill this in. I'm going to fill in these lines, sort of this tribal look, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I filled in all my black areas, and as you may note, I outlined um, my fish just to give it a more distinct line, and I'm going to finish painting in some of our areas that haven't been painted and let's see uh, we could introduce some blue actually let's do our background let's put some blue in our background and then see where we need to go from there now my brush is quite wet using cerulean blue we want the effect of the blue but we don't want it to be too prominent that it takes away from our little painting I try to use rather wide strokes so I don't get too much uh,
so it's not so evident where I've started and stopped. I'm trying to keep it fairly even. The you know the depth of color. Okay, I'm not sure. Sorry, I banged my table. Doesn't show up too much. I might want to. No, I'm just going to leave it. Now let's come in and just finish up our painting. Uh, we can bring in. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's go with a quinacridone gold. This is uh, Daniel Smith. Not this isn't the best gold I've you know I love Daniel Smith, but this isn't the best gold I've seen. Uh, it's more like a a brown than a gold. Okay. Let's bring some purple in. Why not? I'm going to use M. Graham because this is a nice purple. Okay, we might want to bring that purple up here too and uh, clean my brush a little bit. That purple, there was a lot there. If I clean my brush, I just realized what I said. Um, I didn't, I just tapped it on a cloth to get rid of some of the water. Okay. So that's our fish. I'll paint it in. Oh, no, it isn't. <laughs> Sorry. We need to do something here. We could bring in a little more red, I think. Uh, yeah, let's bring in a little more red. Sort of uh, tie it together. I'm just going to do these centers here in red. As you see, I'm still using my number five brush. Just the very tip. It's amazing how you can get fairly accurate, precise work out of a, a relatively thick brush by just using the tip. Okay. And just covering some spots here that didn't quite get the paint on. Some white spots. Okay. Now I'm trying to decide what I'm going to paint up here. What color? Let's bring our turquoise in again. Or maybe... 
maybe an orange let's go with an orange i'm going to go with a cadmium orange from Windsor and Newton. This is tricky because my red's not dry yet. So I have to be careful. Okay, I'm going to dry this and then we'll come back and we're going to do a little bit more pen work. And before we do any pen work, I think I'm going to come in and do a little bit of shading um, to accentuate some of our colors here. Now I'm coming in with some M. Graham again. And I'm going to use this orange. over this yellow just to give it some depth and again I'm going to outline here again to try to work on depth and I'm going to mix that orange with a bit of cerulean or sorry alicerin crimson and come back again with a little bit more of a yet darker color. And same down here. And a darker green here. And that's going to be my Payne's Gray and my Sap Green to give me an olive green. And I'm going to outline here. Now, when this is totally dry and I'm done, I'm going to come in with Kmart Varnish to uh, set my paint and then Mod Podge to accent uh, and give it again more dimension. And some orange up here. I hope you can see in the camera how the, what a difference that makes. Uh, use my turquoise a little bit darker and accent the areas that I have the turquoise. Okay, again with my brown, I'm going to come in with a slightly darker brown, my raw umber. Okay, I say okay a lot. <laughs> starting to realize and again with my purple less water Okay, how are we doing? A little bit more on my yellow here with the orange. And 
Now this kind of effects you can get with uh, alcohol ink markers. It's beautiful. Alcohol ink markers are beautiful for blending and getting depth. But as you can see, you can do it with, uh, this is, was too strong a difference. You can do it uh, with watercolor too, so take a chance. All right, now we're going to come in with that. I'm going to dry that for a second. And we're going to come in and do some pen work. And I always find this is makes such a difference. Let's draw some uh, reflection of light on our lips there. We can draw some dots here. I love my white gel pen. I love gel pens, period. And we're going to come in with a 01 micron pen and do, let's see, what can we do? Let's draw some lines here. Uh, let's strengthen these lines. It's the beauty of uh, pen and wash or line and wash or actually let's change this to a, a tweed like pattern. It just to me adds so much to a painting to these little these are almost like illustration paintings which I love doing. Uh, where else can we do that? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go up here. A little bit of a curve here. We don't have to do the whole thing. We can stop there if we want. We can keep going. Um, let's keep going. Fairly light lines here. These are just the details that make all the difference. Okay, uh, feels like we should do something here now. Oh, let's add some lines. Let's give this fish some eyelashes, some serious eyelashes. There we go. Okay, I hope you can see the difference this is making.
Let's see, let's turn this around. just for fun I think you're getting the idea um, should we add some dots here And let's add some dots to our darker green. Okay, I think. bring out our reeds a little bit this is ending up to be a little bit longer video than I'm intended to do I try to keep mine 20 minutes or less sometimes you just can't and I hope it was worth it to you to have stayed um, again if you could let me know are you, you know, one of the 55 plus or even 65 plus? And if you're here because you especially like watercolor, um, just learning painting in general, line and wash, again, those sort of things uh, I'd be interested in knowing. Let's bring this out a little bit stronger now if you're using micron pens for the first time it's important not to press too hard these tips are very fragile okay is that all the curly cues we have I wonder if we're done. Uh, something up here on the tail. I might just outline the tail. Good to leave some areas just, uh, you know, a solid paint. Let's strengthen these curly cues. Now I'm going to spray some Kmart varnish on that I think I'm going to and then do two coats of Mod Podge and we'll come back and say goodbye you can see the finished product back in a flash okay so here we have our finished little painting I put uh, two coats of Kmart varnish on and then I put uh, two coats of Mod Podge on just to help uh, to give it dimension and bring out my um, bring out the colors so yeah I'm happy with that I think that's a sweet little picture and this is what it would look like if we added uh, a mat I sized this so that it would fit with a five by seven mat so that's a green mat there I think that's pretty and we have a yellow one here I think the yellow one really makes our little painting stand out. So, yeah, bright and cheerful. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you uh, appreciated my little lesson on YouTube. <laughs>
just because when I, be, I watched hours and hours and hours of YouTube before I decided to uh, create a channel and never really understood the analytics and, you know, the workings of YouTube. So I thought I would share that with you folks today. would love to hear from you, as I said before, and uh, it all helps. So, yeah, you folks have a great day and uh, see you in the next one. Remember, today is a good day to have a good day. Bye for now.